Today I want to talk about the USS Ohio, brand new legendary tier American battleship. And before we get into running down the stats, a couple of things. Number one, this match that you're about to see is a pretty high damage match, or at least respectable damage. It does not unfortunately show off the power of the Ohio's secondaries, but it does show off the power of the main guns. And really, the reason I'm choosing to show you this game is because I've been playing this ship along with Brisbane and every other ship for about three days since the update started, and I cannot seem to get a match where either the red team lasts long enough for things to be interesting, or the blue team doesn't just fold instantly. The quality of gameplay right now is, uh, let's just say, not good. In any case, USS Ohio, what's it all about? We're going to run down the stats, I'll tell you how it plays, and we'll talk about the commander build options, because I think they, well, relative to other ships, they're pretty much infinite for this particular vessel. Anyway, to begin with, USS Ohio has a lot of HP, I think more than any other legendary tier battleship, 96,300 base. And of course, you can increase that if you want to put old Billy Sims at the helm, which you certainly could do. But again, we'll talk about commander builds in a little bit. Something else good about the Ohio, it's got 42% torpedo damage reduction, which is quite robust. Maybe not as good as the Yamato's ridiculous uh, 55% or whatever it has, but it'll certainly mitigate the damage of torpedoes that hit this vessel, and that is nice. The guns, of course, are sort of the piece de resistance, or however you say that phrase in French. They are eight 18-inch guns, or 457-millimeter guns, same size as the Tier 7 USS Georgia. And you could almost look at the Ohio as a successor to the Georgia. As you can see, the guns do a lot of damage. Of course, that's not that impressive because that was against a Marlboro. But at base, the AP shells do a maximum of 15,750 when they hit the Citadel. And of course, you can buff that with various damage buffing skills that you can find on the American commanders. Or Azerlay, New Jersey, if you have her. Of course, if you put her at the helm, then that 15,750 can go, I think, near 20,000, maybe even above it with her various damage buffing skills. So a lot of damage from these eight 457 millimeter guns. The HE characteristics are not bad, although I don't know why you would ever really need to shoot the HE. The shells do a maximum of 6,450 damage, and they've got a 43% fire chance, which is quite nice. For some reason at base, these guns are permitted to have a ridiculous lightning quick 30 second 180 degree turret traverse. I have no idea why the guns are permitted to traverse this quickly. I actually don't think they should be able to, and I would expect at least that aspect should at some point be nerfed. 30 seconds is kind of ridiculous to have guns this powerful traversing and tracking targets. The reload also is pretty good, 27.5 seconds. The bad thing about these main battery guns, if there is one, is the maximum range. I've only got a range of 17 and a half kilometers base. Now you can buff that if you're going to use somebody like William Sims, of course. But even then, I think we were only hitting 18.9 km, and Yamato outranges that by at least a kilometer. So the range on this is a little bit low. Now for the secondaries, which are usable. They're basically like Massachusetts secondaries. There are 20 of them. 10 guns on either side in five double turrets. They're 127 millimeter destroyer caliber guns, so they're not going to be penning much armor. But they do reload in 3.7 seconds. Their HE does a maximum of 1800 damage. And they've got a 9% fire chance, which is well above the fire chance for the actual 127 millimeter destroyer guns in this game. 
so they can be very efficient at starting fires. Their base range is seven kilometers. So if you use the porcupine skill and at least hipper as one inspiration, you can get their range up to 10.6 kilometers. If you build fully for secondaries by using porcupine, hipper, and Haruna, I think you can get them up to around 11.1, .1, but both values are of course usable. And they do seem to be the Massachusetts secondaries with the improved accuracy. The ship, for what it's worth, also has an AA defense rating of 100, so it's probably pretty good. And, well, I don't know, we don't really see too many CVs at the Legendary tier, so I don't know how often it will come into play. Certainly not in this match, but of course, if you wanted a taste of the efficacy of the guns, you can see that in just a little bit over five minutes, we've done 146,000 damage with them. And by the way, well, we'll get to my commander build in a moment. Lastly, we've got the maneuverability and concealment. The USS Ohio... A vessel this large, you wouldn't expect it to be super fast, and it's not. The base speed, I think, is 27 knots. I've got it at 28.8 .8 with the build I'm using. Turning circle radius is huge at 950 meters, and the rudder shift is not great, exceeding 19 seconds. Not quite as abysmal as Montana's, horrible 22 second rudder shift but still right up there this is not a very agile or responsive ship when it comes to turning and then finally the concealment we are of course running concealment module and condo is one of our inspirations so the concealment is 13 kilometers by sea which is eminently workable now as for the commander build in this particular match, I was actually using the Autobot Optimus Prime. And why was I doing that? Well, we haven't touched on the Ohio's consumables. And you might be thinking, well, there's only two consumables. There's the repair party and the secondary consumable. And we know what the secondary consumable does. Obviously, it increases the accuracy of the secondaries. But the repair party... Now that is the key here, because the Ohio gets a rather special repair party. The first good thing about it, or the first unique thing, I guess we would say, is that it restores more HP than the typical battleship repair party. It does 624 HP per tick. And if we compare that to something like, for example, the Montana, it's only does 432, so you're getting about 200 more HP from this repair party every second compared to, you know, a standard one that you would find on the Montana. So it's not a super heal, but it's an improved heal. It'll restore like about three, maybe four bars of HP compared to a regular battleship one, which does a little bit less. So there's one good thing about it right off the bat. The duration of the consumable is 28 seconds, which I don't think is anything too crazy, but it's the reload time or the cooldown time on this repair party that makes it unique. It is a 35 second base cooldown. So that means once the repair party has finished healing all the damage it can and goes on the reload, you only have to wait 35 seconds until it's available again and it restores more HP than a typical repair party. This is a fast-acting heal, in other words, and that means, theoretically at least, the USS Ohio is going to be pretty good at brawling. It can push in, it can take some punishment, but then it can restore its HP very, very quickly, much quicker than any other brawling battleship in this game. And so, for this particular match, I was not actually using the commander build I'm going to recommend to you, which is Willis Lee, with the secondary skills and, of course, Master Mechanic. Now, of course, you could run Azerlane, New Jersey. You could run William Sims if you want to buff the power of the guns, but you've seen the guns perform in this battle exceptionally well 
without any accuracy buffs from the commander at all. I'm using actually Optimus Prime, who is more or less the same as Willis Lee. And I'll show you why I'm using him in a second. To be fair, I am using the legendary, or not the legendary, the epic artillery plotting room mod, which gives you 11% better dispersion. And then because it's epic, every 30k damage you do, it gives you another 2% dispersion. I do recommend running this on the Ohio, just as I run it on the Georgia. You can see we've got it maxed out now. And I think if you just run that epic um, artillery plotting room mod, then you will not need to spec into accuracy for these guns. They are great enough on their own. So I think the case for running somebody like Willis Lee is because he gives you extra heals. Of course, if you're going to go with New Jersey or Sims, you're only going to get three of these heals, which reload in 30 seconds, and you can burn through them quite quickly. Uh, but with Willis Lee or with Optimus Prime, as I'm using in this game, you can get Master Mechanic and you can up that total of repair parties to five. But the reason I was using Optimus Prime in this game is twofold. Number one, his base trait further reduces the reload time on the repair party, something I haven't really noticed before, but it does. So the 35 second cooldown goes down to 32 seconds with him. Maybe not that big of a difference, which is why I ultimately ended up switching to Willis Lee. But the other thing that uh, the Optimus Prime guy has going for him is the Revocation Protocol skill in his first row of skills, which is probably the most powerful survivability skill in the game. It reduces fire burn duration when fully maxed by 20%. And it's easy to fully max it because it's in the first line of skills. Now, you might not think that's very interesting, and you might say, oh, Megatron also has that skill, which is true. But it's like the best survivability skill in the game because fires do a lot of damage to battleships. In fact, for every second a fire ticks, it takes away 0.3% of your battleship's total HP. So that's 0.03%. I think I said 0.3%. 0.03% of your battleship's total HP. That is a large number over 60 seconds. If you can reduce that to 45 seconds, 47 seconds with revocation protocol, then you're saving yourself a lot of HP for a full duration burn. And if you add the damage control mod on top of that you can reduce the fire chance to or the fire burn time to 37 seconds which is great and then you add on fight fire with fire you've got these three fast loading repairs you've got your secondaries and all of a sudden you've got yourself a tanky brawler ship and this is of course a massachusetts hull or not a massachusetts a montana hull which means that the armor plating is very good it's got 38 millimeter deck plating it's got a very robust upper belt armor and a very thick citadel belt armor line. It's quite tanky. So add that on to the repair party and the reduced fire chance with Optimus Prime might be a good build to go with. But I am, of course, recommending Willis Lee because he is a free-to-play commander and anybody can use him. And I think if you are going to play the USS Ohio, you probably do want to build it for secondaries and be pushing in. Now, obviously, this game is not a great example of that. We mostly relied on our main guns, and this is the kind of match you could certainly play with Azerlane, New Jersey, or William Sims. And maybe if you did, with these seven citadels, you would have had a little bit more damage if New Jersey was at the helm. So it's a nice ship in the sense that it can function under pretty much any commander build you want. It's very versatile, and I don't really think there's a wrong way to build it. Plus, it is quite effective and quite fun. It's just unfortunate that this game doesn't show off its brawling potential, but I'll continue to play the Ohio, and we'll get there eventually. We'll get a good brawling game in the ship for you to see, just maybe not during update week. So I highly recommend Ohio. As for how you get it, though, you'd have to grind out all the ice coins in the campaign, and according to Seahal's community manager... 
You would have to pay 15,000 doubloons in total to get this game if you do everything else, including the calendar daily missions and the campaign admiralty with backing, or the campaign with admiralty backing. That costs 2.5k doubloons. Calendar is free to complete, and then an additional 12.5k doubloons for 10 level 3 crate bundles, which will give you the remaining 2,500 ice crowns that you need. So probably this thing costs 15,000 doubloons, which is a little bit less than I think a tier 7 premium costs, so you could potentially look at it as a good deal, although it is uh, it is quite expensive. So there is that, unfortunately, but it is a great ship. I really enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.